Welcome to The Blitz, a podcast from Coram Deo Church. The Blitz is all about tackling tough topics head on at full speed. Are you ready? Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is that you happen to be checking out this podcast. My name is John, pastor of Cormdale Church, and I will be your host today on The Blitz. Once again, it's just me behind the mic. Although, there's some fun kind of scheming uh, about getting some other voices to hop on here with me. But for today, it's just me. So, uh, so here we go. Uh, I don't have a clever name uh, for this episode, at least not yet, and I guess for now. We'll just call it Genesis 1. Uh, I wanted to just kind of t- share some uh, things I've been thinking through, some observations, uh, stuff I'm seeing, and uh, and bringing it all back to Genesis 1. And I guess the big idea is here is this, that uh, a lot of, uh, well, a lot if not all of what we are currently watching in terms of kind of the the unraveling, the redefinitions, the uh, cultural, moral insanity and mess that we continue to be, uh, we continue to plunge ourselves into the, uh, the, the realm that the progressive are progressing in. Um, all of it comes down uh, in its simplest terms to a, uh, really an attack, an aggressive attack of Genesis chapter one. Uh, almost everything that we are witnessing right now, look at your newsfeed, all of the stuff that's going on, the, 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 the headlines that you, uh, you hear and you go, oh my gosh, is that, is that really happening? Does somebody say that? Is somebody actually doing this? Um, yes, all of this in its most basic form all goes back to Genesis chapter one. So I just want to talk through some of that real uh, real briefly, and just want to encourage you as you're kind of watching the direction and the shape uh, that that culture is taking right now. Listen to uh, the politicians, especially the progressive politicians. Listen to uh, the liberal theologians. I I want you to think of all of that and keep going back to Genesis one. And one and what you will see is that what's taking place right now. Um, very much can be uh, understood as a direct assault on Genesis 1. All the confusion, or I should say the vast, vast, vast majority of the confusion uh, that we're currently witnessing and experiencing uh, can all be resolved by a cursory reading of Genesis 1. Now, I know some of you might be going, well, yeah, of course, because in the beginning, you know, God created the heavens and the earth, and so we have God, and the problem is that our society is godless. Absolutely, 100% agree. We have godless leaders. We live in a godless country. Uh, Our churches are increasingly becoming godless. Yes, absolutely. If we could just nail that piece, right, then everything else would resolve itself. So yes, I get it uh, and would agree with you. But I want to look at some of the specifics um, that flow from that godlessness. I want you to see how the world as it is being presented to you right now through the voices uh, um, of uh, of the left, the voices of, of liberal theology, the, the prophets of our culture, the world that is being presented to you is just a flip-flop, a almost direct flip-flop of Genesis 1, okay? And, I, and I'm not talking about uh, the age of the earth. I'm not talking about uh, six literal days of creation or six seasons or, or, or ages. And that's all fun to get into. And I think it is actually really important. Um, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some other things. First of all, we'll talk about human dignity. Human dignity. Do humans possess a unique intrinsic value that other other beings do not possess. So for example, is a human being intrinsically more value valuable than a plant? Is a human being intrinsically more valuable than a cow or any other type of animal? Um, is a human being intrinsically more important than another human being? Do some human beings matter more 
in terms of intrinsic value and dignity, do they matter more than others? Because there's there's a lot of confusion on this, and I'm not I'm not even primarily talking um, racially. I'm just talking about human beings having dignity, not being on a the same playing field as animals or vegetation, right? But actually having a unique dignity and value that is bestowed upon them because as we read in Genesis, human beings did not evolve from some primordial soup. We are not the result of a random accident and and dust and chemicals and proteins and all the stuff just happening to, you know, happen at the same, uh, at the right time over bazillions of years. But the human beings are actually created beings, the artwork of a triune, mysterious, eternal, uh, infinite, immutable God, right? That's where our value comes from. And, and Genesis says that God made us in his image and as glorious as the mountains are, as, as wonderful and breathtaking is as uh, Mount Rainier is as we uh, see it here in Kitsap County all the time. Or if you are driving up uh, up over Ridgetop Avenue and you see the Olympics, you know, uh, with the wonderful snow or you're driving around Dyes Inlet or anywhere you're taking in uh, the beauty of creation. You go for a drive around the Hood Canal. It is absolutely wonderful. And as beautiful and wonderful and awe-inspiring as all of those things are, none of them have been uh, had the image of God bestowed upon them. Yes, they are beautiful. Yes, they are glorious. And yet... God has bestowed this unique privilege and honor of bearing his image that has been given not to the animals, nor to Mount Everest, nor to Mount Rainier, but has been given to ordinary human beings like you and me, human dignity. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the scriptures. God made all people unique in his image image. And this means that we cannot, uh, we cannot bring humanity down to the level of creation, nor can we bring the creation up to the level of humanity. And neither can we devalue and bring down the value of another human being made in the image of God, nor can we take somebody who made in the image of God and elevate them higher over others. But we have to acknowledge, and I'm talking about value and dignity here, that all human beings are made in the image of God. So human dignity, right? It matters. And we see right now human dignity under attack, whether it's under attack uh, in the womb for the unborn, whether it's attack in terms of the way that there are ideologies that are pervasive in our culture right now that are directly intended to divide and separate us into different classes, we, we just have to read Genesis 1 and go, you know what? All human beings were made in the image of God. And in, in that same cluster of verses at the end of Genesis 1, you get all sorts of truths that are spoken that are so simple and plain, profoundly important. And yet today they are considered as scandalous and even hateful. So not so not just human beings have dignity. Now let's talk about God making man, male and female in his image. So God has bestowed his image upon all of humanity, but God has created male and God has created female. Those are God-given realities. They are gifts that God gives uh, uh, gives to his people. So God created man in his own image, Genesis 127. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Gender is a God-given reality. It is not a social construct. If you buy into the notion that gender is simply a social construct, then what keeps you from believing that the notion that gender is a social construct is a social construct in and of itself? If everything is a social construct, then nothing is. There is no truth and nothing uh, matters. Freddie Mercury from Queen was right. Nothing really matters. 
But what we see in the scriptures is that male and female are not things that are defined by culture, nor are they defined by human beings. Adam was not asked what he identifies with or does not identify as, but rather God created male and female in his image. What this means is that gender is not just defined by God, but it is a gift that God bestows. When God creates a woman, a female, he is giving a gift to, to her. Her femininity, her femaleness is a gift, a precious gift that only God can create. And when God creates a male, he is giving a gift to that human being, maleness, something that only God can define and create. And he gives them as gifts. To say that a male uh, is something objective and that a female is something, object is something objective, that femaleness and maleness are defined uh, not by the individual nor by the culture, but by the creator, right? That's a scandalous saying right now. But this is, this is one of the things that our culture is absolutely confused about, right? We've lost our minds over this stuff. And here it is, Genesis 1 just lays it out. God made men, God made women. That is, those are God-given, God-defined realities that we are to embrace and celebrate and rejoice in because God gives all good gifts. Next, family. What is a family? Right? right now, there's a lot of pressure to redefine the family in such a way that it is absolutely meaningless. This is both uh, being redone in terms of definition and also in terms of practice. Okay, now here's what I mean by that. Um, a family, as God sets it up in, in Genesis chapter 1 and in chapter 2, is a male and a female, a mother and a father, a husband and a wife. They become one flesh. They are bound together in the covenant of marriage together. And that covenant union uh, produces life, right? Image bearers produce life life when their god-given roles are embraced it often leads to life and so you have moms and you have dads and you have children and family is actually the most basic fundamental building block of all culture and societies if families are strong cultures are strong if families are weak cultures and societies are, are weak but family is the is the most fundamental basic building block for any civilization one of the things that is um, what we're seeing right now, if you pay attention to the, um, the politics going on in Virginia, um, the issue <laughs> that, is, that has gotten the existing uh, governor into quite a bit of trouble is his insistence that parents should not have a say in how their kids are educated, right? Why would he, why would he say that? Well, he believes the state should determine how kids are educated. Uh, educated. But here we just go back to Genesis, mom, dad, the family. That's the most basic building block is defined by God. A man will leave his mother and his father and cling uh, to his wife. They will become one flesh. Genesis says they were naked, Adam and Eve, and they were unashamed and an offspring uh, were the fruit of that union. Here we have a very simple definition. Human beings made in God's image, male and female made in God's image, made to complement one another uh, in almost every way. This constitutes the human family and the fruitfulness of that is children. Boys are born and girls are born. All of this is complete scandal <laughs> given our uh, the current culture, but it's just plain and clear in the scriptures, okay? So we have human dignity, we have gender, male and female, we have family defined as, as, as an institution that God has created, it is a gift. Uh, throughout the scriptures, children are not seen as a liability uh, that are to be avoided, they're not a curse to this world, um, but they are a gift. Uh, so much of the um, the, the climate panic that um, takes place right now, let me, let me make sure you heard what I said, climate panic, okay? I, we are uh, stewards of the earth. We should do everything we can to responsibly um, take care of it. That is a, a biblical truth. There can be no arguing with that. What is happening right now 
is I would I would characterize it, define it more as a climate panic, which means people are thinking in the next couple of years the world's going to come to an end, and and in that kind of ideology, human beings are seen as imposters in this world, right? That the world would be better off with less human beings, and then consequently, why would anybody want to bring children into this world? You see how that works, right? We're imposters. We are the destroyers of the planet. We are the problem. What we see in Genesis is that God gives Adam and Eve dominion, right? They rule over the earth. Again, they are not on an equal footing with the creation as beautiful and majestic as it is. They have authority over it. They are to rule the creation and care and tend for. That means to be responsible with the way that they use the resources for sure. But nowhere are you going to get this notion that human beings are these imposters, that that we are the problem. Today, you will hear this over and over and over again. We are the problem. People are the problem. We are ruining the planet. We need to have less children. We need less people, overpopulation, right? When God creates Adam and Eve, he says, be fruitful and multiply, It's the exact opposite of what so many of the uh, voices in our culture today are telling us. People are a threat. People are the problem. We need less people. We need a lower birth rate. Genesis says, hey, have babies, right? Be fruitful and multiply and extend your dominion. So here is another huge uh, issue in terms of the way that we see human beings relating with the world, uh, relating specifically to the earth. God has granted dominion to Adam and Eve. He has granted dominion to human beings. And when human beings express that dominion, when they embrace it, they are not putting the earth at threat, right? They are not a curse to the world. They are not the problem. They are uh, fulfilling their God-given vocation to rule this earth. So we've got all sorts of just uh, kind of just um, you know, things that people just take for granted, things that people post online, things that people say and they believe without even thinking about them. Right here in Genesis 1, you have all of the almost cultural talking points, right, just easily dealt with, identified, and corrected by just simply reading Genesis 1. There is a God. He is the creator of all things. He did make human beings. We are not an accident. God does give, uh, does create men and women, male and female, in his image. Those are God-given realities that are to be uh, received with, with faith and thanksgiving and celebrated. It is not a problem. God has created the family. It is a woman and a man, a mother and a father and their children. They are to multiply. They are to fill the earth. Um, the family is the most fundamental building block of society, not the state. Children are a gift and human beings are not an imposter Uh, and not the problem in this world. We are not posing um, a threat to say that, okay? So we're not imposters. We are created to express and extend dominion. If you just took three minutes to read Genesis chapter one, you would see how so much, so many of the talking points, so much of what is going on, the insanity right now, it is just a clear, direct attack on Genesis 1. And, and and I'll sum this up. This is actually a fairly short podcast, so yay for me. I'll sum this up by saying um, by saying this. I think it was Luther that said if you get the first 3 books of or 3 uh, chapters of Genesis right, you get the whole Bible right. And and to that I would give a hearty amen. Um, but I would also add to this. If we just understand what God is clearly saying in Genesis chapter one, we have a clear roadmap out of the cultural insanity we are currently uh, witnessing, that we are currently trying to navigate. 
So friends, go back, read Genesis, see what God has said, see how God has created and ordered the world. And as you hear different rival visions of reality, rival visions of what it means to be human, of gender and sexuality and the family and the state and the future, come back to Genesis 1 and what you will find is a teacher, a friend who will faithfully instruct you in the truth. And it is a truth that Christ has sets us free, meaning it's a truth that liberates us to live as God has created us to live. Genesis 1 matters. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Hope that was uh, enjoyable and helpful for you. Until next time, take care.